Welcome back to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're talking about MIDI editor shortcuts, things to insert notes, move them, change octaves, manipulate them in various ways. These are my most used shortcuts and I'm sure that you'll get some ideas for improving your workflow. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with thousands of inspiring classes on art, productivity, graphic design, filmmaking, and more. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. This week I started two classes on filmmaking. The first one is storytelling in film using cinematography to convey emotion. And this is all about framing and composition, lighting, camera movements, things like that things to make your films better. I've also been watching Simon Cade's How to Improve Your Films with Color Grading. I love learning about filmmaking, and even if I'm not using these specific tips and tricks in my own videos, I know that at some point I will need these things, and also it helps develop a critical eye so I can improve my shots uh, when the time comes. And these are just two out of thousands of classes available on pretty much every topic. Click the link in the description for a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium you get access to every single class. And in a month, you can take dozens of classes, really level up your skills, become inspired and create excellent work. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, supporting the Reaper blog. And thank you guys for checking out the sponsor. It really helps. And I'm sure that you'll enjoy Skillshare. And so let's start off in the MIDI editor. And I've got this floating, but I normally use it docked. It's just a little easier for the video to do it floating. So we're gonna start off with inserting some notes. So the obvious and probably the way that you're used to using is double click to insert a note, uh, but that's two clicks for everything you wanna do. If you have your edit cursor placed somewhere, I use the insert key to add in a note at that position. And along with other keyboard shortcuts that I use, I can insert notes from the keyboard and not use the mouse at all. We'll talk about the uh, note position functions a little bit later on, but just inserting notes, I've got that assigned to the insert key. And so let's look at the action list for the MIDI editor. Insert key is on insert note at edit cursor. That's not the default as far as I can tell, um, but I do find that very helpful. Now the next one is insert note at the mouse cursor. So this is even faster. And I've got this on the A key, which is on my left hand, where my hand is almost always parked as I'm working. So I can just point where I want a note and I press A and that puts in a note at my mouse cursor. And this is a super easy, quick way without having to stress your right hand. Um, it's just a very convenient thing. MIDI notes insert with the velocity of the previous MIDI note. So if I put in a MIDI note and set this to 53 and then press A to insert another note, it will also be at uh, MIDI velocity 53. What if you want different velocities at, as you insert them? So I actually use a variety of shortcuts for this. One, two, three, four for four different preset velocities. I did an entire video on this topic, so I'll link to that. These are custom actions, custom insert note under mouse. One, two, three, four are my high, low, medium, and max velocities, and it looks like this. I press one for my max velocity, 127, two for my high velocity, which is at, uh, is at 100 velocity. Number three is at, looks like 77. And number four is looking like about 32 velocity. So I find this a very quick way to insert notes and set the velocities roughly where I need them um, without having to constantly switch between inserting a note and then dragging to change the velocity or do everything in two steps where I program all the notes in at 127 or just any random velocity and then go back and adjust every single one by dragging the velocity. So inserting notes with specific velocities, check out the video linked in the description for more on that. And by the way, every keyboard shortcut and every um, custom action that I talk about will be in the blog post along with this video, and that may be easier for you to follow along or reference at a later date. Now let's talk about moving notes by semitone. So I've got this on command up and down or control on PC. So command up, moves that note up by a semitone. 
and that works with multiple selected. I can just tap that up or down. And I forgot to mention that these actually follow the key snap function. So here's an arpeggio. And without key snap on, just chromatic, I can shift these up by semitones. And let's bring them back down to where they were. And put on key snap, and we'll set this to a minor key. Now I'll shift those, and they will stay in key. And you can see that the note spacing follows the key rather than just retaining the original. So there's uh, a note between here, a note between. So instead of this being um, a whole step between, it's only a half step when we get to uh, this uh, C sharp. Adding in that key snap function makes this work even better when you know the key of your song. That action is edit move notes down one semitone, or the other one move up one semitone. How about in octaves? So I just add in shift with that, and then up or down, I can move in octaves. Same pitch, octave higher or lower. And so this is a great way to uh, build up chords really quickly, to do inversions and things like that. I find that really helpful. So now let's talk about changing the position of notes in time. So I'll select this note here, and if I do command left, that moves it left, and if I do command right, that moves it right. And this is following the grid size. So if I set my grid to one, and I move it, it's going to stay in the same position, but it's gonna, going to jump ahead by one bar. So that action was command left, and I have that on move notes left by one grid unit. And next, we're going to look at moving MIDI notes by smaller increments. So that was by the grid size, now by one pixel. So I might even have to zoom in here so you can see that. But I'm going to do Command Shift Left, and that will just move that ever so slightly off the grid. And so this is a great way to add subtle variations, subtle timing differences to your performance without drag and drop snapping to grid. So I could select several items, nudge them over slightly later to match some other performance that's happening. Uh, and then if I wanted to snap them, I could grab them and drag them. And it's very simple. I have another one assigned to mouse wheel. This is command option mouse wheel. And this will shift it left and right by, uh, by pixels, essentially the same. And so let's look at those actions. Command shift left, move notes left one pixel, and also move notes right one pixel on command shift right. And then using the mouse wheel, which is uh, command alt or option and mouse wheel, move events left or right mouse wheel MIDI relative only. That's even quicker than using the, sh the shortcuts, I find, but both are useful at times. Next, I have a custom action for moving the selected note to my edit cursor. So I've got this note here at bar three, beat two, and I wanna snap that over to bar two, beat four, where my edit cursor is, and I press the Y key, and that snaps it over, and it moves my edit cursor to the next uh, note. So that's really simple for um, moving selected notes to another location without using uh, copy and paste, but technically that is what it's doing inside of the custom action. I'll show you this custom action real quick edit cut, edit paste as one action, and that's gonna be moving the selected note to the edit cursor. And there is no default function for that. There's move left edge of note to edit cursor or move right edge of note to edit cursor, but that changes the length, which is also useful, but not something I tend to use too often in my work. Going back to editing velocities, I think I showed this in Fresh Start part four, but this is holding the command key and dragging the mouse wheel, and this will change the velocity. And if I have other um, envelopes in here, like let's put in the, the volume envelope, and I put in some points here. If I select a couple points and then command mouse wheel over them, that will scale those down. 
So that works by having a note selected, a MIDI CC selected, or the velocity selected. And that will do to all and just linearly scale them up or down using the mouse wheel. So that action here is adjust value for events, mouse wheel, MIDI controller only. I have that on command mouse wheel. Now let's come back to something I mentioned earlier, which was moving the edit cursor. So I've got this set up really simply, up, down, left, right, moves the edit cursor by the grid size. And so you can see the pitch in the green color going up and down, and my edit cursor position in the flashing green um, edit cursor position is moving left and right. So those actions are navigate, move edit cursor left by grid, move edit cursor right by grid, decrease pitch cursor one semitone, and increase pitch cursor one semitone. So as I showed earlier, I could put in a note at the edit cursor very simply by using the insert key. Go up to, and I could skip a note. Go down, and this can all be done without using the mouse. Not always the fastest way, but sometimes it is very fast to work this way. It depends on what you're doing, and this goes along kind of with uh, step inputting as well. Um, being able to move the edit cursor up, down, left, right, along with step editing is very helpful. So along with moving the edit cursor by the grid size, it's helpful to also be able to edit the grid size without moving the mouse. So what I use for that is option right and option left on the actions grid multiply grid size by half and grid multiply grid size by two. So if I press option right, it's going to multiply my grid size by half. I'm at quarter notes now, so multiplying by half makes it an eighth note grid. And then any notes I move will move by that grid size. And I can also make my grid resolution less fine by going option left, and I can set that to half notes, one measure, two measures, four measures, eight measures, 16 measures. You could see that changing in the grid function in the bottom left, as well as in my toolbar, where I have my most common grid sizes there. So I, so I could, of course, use my mouse and use either of those functions, or I can use the keyboard shortcut. And those things are just kind of a visual reference. And it can kind of keep my eyes focused on where I'm inserting notes, where I'm editing things. And the last section of this will be copy, cut, paste, duplicate functions. Things you'll use a lot, but there's some variations that I like to use, and some things just make it a little bit quicker than the defaults. So let's start off with cut. And so I have this assigned to the X key. So instead of Command X or Control X on PC, I just press X. And if I want to paste somewhere, I just move my edit cursor and then press V. And that's going to paste those in the same pitch position. So I can put my pitch cursor here and paste. It's still going to paste into the same pitch position because that's the way that pasting in the MIDI editor works. I also have the action to cut within the time selection. So if I make a time selection like this, a time and um, note selection, and then cut with Command Shift X, that's going to be within the time selection. But that will work on a individual note if that's all I selected as well and paste that. It's kind of subtly different, but I guess you can have uh, notes selected and also, let's say I also select this note, but then I want this one in, in the time selection. If I cut this, it's only going to be within the time selection. It's kind of an edge case sort of thing, but um, nevertheless, that's what I have there. For copy, I've just got that on C instead of Command C. So I can make a selection like this, press C, go over to bar six, press V, and those notes go in there. I also have the smart copy, which just is on command shift C. And so this is going to be the same using the time selection kind of variation of this. If I press command shift C, that will copy it. I can move over, paste it, and only the selected notes within my time selection were moved. 
those within time selection actions, the smart cut and smart copy functions. I was showing these with short notes, but they make more of a difference when you have long notes or combinations of long and short notes. You can select an area that has uh, a long note, long sustaining note, longer than your time selection, copy just that area of it, and then paste that somewhere else. Um, and it'll just have that shorter section of that. Next, I have a custom action for MIDI duplicate. So this looks like this. I'm going to select some items here. I'm going to press Command D. That duplicates it immediately after. So this is a custom MIDI duplicate. Copy, move edit cursor to the end of selected events in active MIDI media item and paste. It just pastes it after the selected note, essentially. Um, this is different than the built-in duplicate which I don't really like this one, uh, duplicate events. So if, I, so if I have this item, this note selected here, it's at bar uh, 5.4. If I run this, it's going to repeat that MIDI note at bar 6.4, and that's not what I want it to do. I want it to just repeat like that, duplicating within time selection. This is great for when you have a certain amount of silence that you want to put uh, put in there as well. So I'll do Command Shift D, and that will repeat those notes, uh, including that gap in there, over to the next bar. So that's it for my most used custom actions and just built-in actions for editing MIDI in Reaper's MIDI editor. Thank you so much for watching. Hope this has been helpful. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.